Good evening. For the first, no, maybe not the first, I'm not the designated survivor today. Hey, last week I got to lead the service because all the pastors were away. Last time I spoke was because all the pastors were away. And, um, and so I'm here, I've, I've finally made it, um, which is great. I've got orange paper because I'm a kid's pastor and that's all I could find earlier. Um, but it is an honor to be with you all today and to, to speak. The room is definitely a lot more full than I thought it was going to be, but it's great. And um, as Pete said, we've been going through this series, and last week, um, Tandy shared a great message on righteousness, which was amazing. I encourage you to listen to it on YouTube, and actually how the righteousness is a gift from God that we get. It's nothing that we do, and so we're going to build on that tonight, and we're going to talk about freedom. But before that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we get to worship you tonight. We thank you that as your word says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And tonight we pray for freedom. We pray that from the very beginning right now, you will open us up and let us know where we need freedom. Where do we need to give you access? We thank you for your word. We thank you that it brings life. And we pray that tonight you speak so clearly. Amen. So I'm actually going to pass the mic over to Josh. Josh, why don't you come up? Josh is going to share our scripture tonight. Let's give him a huge round of applause. Josh is one of our young people. He's an absolute giant, but my friend, there you go. Thank you. Okay, so this is from 2 Corinthians. 3, 7 to 18, if you want to follow along with the Bible. Now, if the ministry of death, carved in letters on stone, came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end, will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. Indeed, in this case, What once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what was being brought to an end came with glory, much more will what is permanent have glory. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amazing. Thank you, Josh. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I want to do a little poll with you. I want to find out who is maybe slightly more cheeky and adventurous and would push themselves, if going to the airport, would try and get maybe into an executive lounge, or if somebody was maybe not a VIP, who would maybe try and get into the VIP area, or maybe who would not be, there'd be slight limits or boundaries. You can keep your hands down if you're not that person, but if you're somebody that would try and, you know, you'd try and push it, you'd try and get in. If that's you, can you just raise a hand? Yeah, Mikey, I definitely know that's you. Yeah, okay, cool, you can take your hands down. You see, I'm really not this kind of guy. I am a down the line, straight to the book. I do exactly what I'm told. You can ask my wife. And uh, apart from a couple years back when I was a kid, see, as you can see, I am somewhat vertically challenged. Um, I, I stopped at the age of 10 growing, and this is me forever. Awesome, thanks God. And um, I, I got the opportunity to go to Disneyland with my family, which was amazing. All I wanted to do was go and Space Mountain. 
Space Mountain was like the ride of all rides. All my friends who had been to Disney came back. They said, you've got to go on Space Mountain. When I got there, I realized I couldn't go on Space Mountain. I was devastated. Yes, that's right. But then I had to think, with my stepdad helping me, I had to think of solutions. And actually, on this holiday, I had brought the old school great classic trainers, which popped out into blades. Little wheels popped out of the sole. That's right. That gave me an extra three inches. And so I just had to walk very steady through. And I got to go on Space Mountain, and it was amazing. It was then on the ride that I realized small people shouldn't go on the rides because my head was banging everywhere. And I was, yeah, that was the last time I tried to get into an area that I didn't have access. The title of the message tonight is Access All Areas. Access All Areas. And I wonder if you feel like you access all areas when it comes to your faith life, when it comes to God when it comes to standing before him in worship, when it comes to crying out in need and asking him to step in, do you actually really feel like you have access of all areas? I know often I don't. But a way to break the scripture down as Paul kind of goes through the, the scripture of, you know, just the Old Testament versus New Testament, I, I, I kind of got thinking a little bit. And... Um, it got me thinking about a concert. So I know many people here are a Coldplay fan. If you're a Coldplay fan, give me a hand. Okay, that's cool. A lot of Coldplay fans. So imagine you, um, you had a friend who went to the Coldplay concert. Who's actually been to a Coldplay concert? That's amazing. I know Pete has. So Pete, when you went to that Coldplay concert, how was that? It was unbelievable. Um, it was incredible. Mind-blowing. It was amazing. A great experience. Well, sometimes I've heard about the Coldplay concerts, and I'll be talking to some other friends. Oh, yeah, Coldplay concerts. Apparently, they're, like, they're wild. Have you been? No. Oh, they're incredible. And I'm, I'm second-handing. I'm getting a piggyback of somebody else's experience. Pete had the access to go to the concert. I did not. But I wonder if it's the same with our faith. I wonder how often we piggyback of other people's experience and encounter with God. You use other people. You need other people to give you the word. You need other people to say, oh, I got a word for you from God. You need other people to unpack the word of God. I hope tonight that you realize that you can have full access. You can have full access to God anytime, anywhere you like because you've got access of all areas. And then the next part of the concert is, is you get to go to the back row. You see our back row, it's then, they're not the cheap seats, they're just the late seats. No judgment, chill out. You see, you get the cheap seats. You know, you paid a little bit and you got there and, you know, you have a great encounter. You have a great experience of the concert. I mean, they're like little, like me. <laughs> they're, they're like really little people and, you know, but it's awesome. You're in the atmosphere. You're there. It's amazing. But then imagine you get this third time. Chris Martin's doing his thing. And then he sees you up in the top, top, top. And he gets down off the stage and he comes all the way through the people, battling through, goes through and comes up to you near the back and he gives you an access all areas pass. Access all areas. But this is like a next level access. Well, I'm going to give it to Josh here because he's a good guy. You see, God knows all of our names. God comes to us where we're at, wherever we are, and he gives us an access all area pass. But so then imagine Chris Martin then takes you up. Josh, don't worry about it. You chill out, mate. So Chris Martin would take us up, but then he doesn't just take you to the back. You'll pass, you get to go past security. You then, he's actually, he actually wants you up by the stage. He wants you there with him. That's what the access all area pass does. Then after, he's like, don't go anywhere. I want you to come and hang out with us. I want you to come to the dressing room. I want you to come to the band. You've got access all areas. And then afterwards, he says, right, Chris Martin says we're going to go to an after party. Oh, hello. I'll go there. Right, we're going to go to an after party. And then after the after party, he says, no, no, you're coming home with me, mate. Let's go and hang out. Yeah, I've got a pool. Yeah, I've got a hot tub sauna, all the stuff. Yeah, we just spend the weekend. 
You've got access to all areas. That isn't just for the concert. That's actually now for life. You see the scripture in the message, it actually talks about face to face with the presence of God. Face to face with the presence of God. I don't want to be piggybacking on somebody else's experience or encounter with God. I don't want to be sitting at the back just having a nice experience. Oh, church is good. I want to have a face-to-face encounter with God. I want to have an access all areas encounter with God. And I wonder if you want to have that encounter tonight as well. Access all areas means a free pass. But also with God, it's a no limitation pass. It's not just for one event, it's forever. It lasts forever. And I wonder what your limitation was tonight. I wonder if when you, you drew into God in worship, whether there was some kind of limitation. I wonder if maybe tonight you just, you just couldn't access it. You just couldn't feel it. But in that word, it says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And the spirit of the Lord is here tonight. And I wonder what you want freedom from. We get freedom from our sin, which many of us know, but maybe we don't actually picture it. That's why Jesus went and died on the cross because he wants to set us free. We were actually talking at the beginning about, or um, Hannah shared a prayer and about forgiveness. When, When we put our faith in Christ, we get forgiven, which then leads to our freedom, which then leads to fruit. Faith, forgiveness, freedom, fruit. We also get freedom from guilt and shame. We get freedom from sickness because of the cross. We get freedom from loneliness, addiction, guilt and shame. And actually this whole, in this part of the Bible is talking about the Old Testament versus the New Testament. You see, we need the Old Testament because through the Old Testament, I'm just going to have a little bit of water, bear with. Mm. Sorry, I didn't mean to kiss the thing. We need the Old Testament, to realize that there's nothing humanity can do. There are so many laws, but actually there was no freedom in it. It brought so much condemnation. It brought so much guilt and shame. But that's why we needed a savior. We needed Jesus. And that's why this is, this is part of the scripture in some Bibles is called the new covenant. We have a new covenant in Christ. Also, through this covenant, we actually get healing. And we, we, get, we get freedom in broken relationships. God actually also wants us to have freedom in our financial issues. He doesn't want us to be limited in our finances. He wants us to live a full and abundant life. And that comes to everything. That is access all areas. And so I wonder what limitations you have in your life. I wonder if there's something just holding you back. My prayer tonight is that God's going to put freedom in that area. My hope tonight is that you're going to walk out of this place feeling free and bold. He spoke about boldness of the spirit. You see, Moses, he had to put a veil over. The shine, when he went and spent time with God, his face would come back glowing because of the spirit. He put a veil over it because people weren't ready. They couldn't take it. They were were scared. The Israelites actually became numb to the spirit of God. I wonder if we've become numb to the Spirit of God. I wonder if God's trying to use us in our day-to-day life, but actually we've become numb. So now my prayer is that we're going to learn to have access in all areas and be aware of what God wants to do in us and through us. pausing because I'm actually wondering whether I go somewhere or not somewhere. There's freedom. You can have freedom. We can have freedom. 
but actually I just want to go to a place of encounter. I could give you all the Old Testament information about the tabernacle, the temple, but actually more important than that, more important than the head knowledge, is just the heart knowledge and the encounter. Our faith in Christ leads to our forgiveness, which leads to our freedom, which then leads to fruit. The fruits of the Spirit are in Galatians. And now so often I need more of the fruits of the Spirit. The end of the scripture talks about Jesus, talks about um, us becoming in the likeness of Christ. What happens when you go, go rogue and you lose your point? Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong in Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passion and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking of envy or envying each other. We've got to live by the Spirit. Every day when, hopefully not every day, but often many days when I feel anxious, I get upset, I sometimes feel depressed. I realize it's the lack of this. It's the lack of the Spirit at work in my life. There's a lack of God and there's things that I need to do in my own head. But I need the Spirit. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. When I get worried about finances, I get too into my own ability to do what I need to do. But when I step into the Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I need freedom in this stuff. We need freedom in this stuff. And so whatever it is, we can come before God and say, God, I want to access all areas. But we've also got to allow God to access all areas. And so often there's things which, which we hold back. That relationship. That addiction. That thing that you just don't really want to let go of because it is feeding the flesh. You know you need to, but you don't necessarily want to. I wonder what you want freedom in tonight. I wonder what you want to see God's fruit in your life tonight. The Spirit of God is the water. Without, without water, a plant will die and it won't bear fruit. The Spirit of God is the water that allows us to bear fruit. When we access all areas in Him and we allow Him to access all areas in us, He will use us to access all areas out there. Share in the kingdom of God with everybody we pass. The more we're in tune with the Spirit, the more we will see freedom. And the more the kingdom of God will grow. We are to be transformed into His likeness. And His likeness only. And so I'm going to ask the band to come up. And actually I'm going to ask you all to stand.